Welcome to African Catholic Voices, a podcast service of the Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network. My name is Father Stan Chu Ilo. I'm your host today. African Catholic Voices is a forum where we talk about our reality as Africans. We bring to you voices of important players in the continent, Catholic leaders, sometimes in the academy or in the pastoral field or in the social field, people who work sometimes at the existential peripheries of life. What we do here is to project these voices to celebrate these voices, the work they do, and to bring both to our African brothers and sisters and the global community some of the great things happening in the continent of Africa. And we talk about these realities from the perspective of our faith. Today is my pleasure to present to you our conversation uh, partner today, the principal of Hekima University College, Father Maso Wineza. Welcome to African Catholic Voices, Father Maso. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Reverend Professor Stan, for this invitation. And it's an honor and a privilege to a privilege to be invited by you. And thank you for making our time to be here with us. And as is traditional with us, I know that for most districts in the continent of Africa and beyond, you are a rising star, people know you. But for those who don't, who are you? Who is Father Maso Wineza? Thank you very much. Marcel Wineza is a Jesuit priest, uh, originally from Rwanda, and uh, currently serving at, uh, at Hekima. I'm the servant of Hekima University College a Jesuit institution that started in 1984. Um, By formation, I am a a systematic theologian. I did doctoral studies in systematic theology at Boston Boston College uh, in the United States. And I also hold a master's in management and leadership from York St. John University in the UK. And prior to those, I had other masters, but that's not crucial thing. Uh, I also, uh, I served as the Dean of the School of Theology here at our University College, the Jesuit School of Theology, and previously served as the assistant to my provincial for formation for the Jesuits. Uh, But above and beyond, my best certificate is that I am a baptized uh, Christian. Wow, isn't that wonderful that uh... Like Pope Francis would say, that's our ID card. Yes. You know, every other thing starts from that um, being a child of God, a baptized uh, member. And uh, we really thank God for your life, Father Matho, for um, your many accomplishments. And I'd like to congratulate you on uh, two of your recent books. Uh, one is the uh, a single um, authored book, your manuscript reading from the archive, and then the other you uh, co-edited with two other scholars, um, Reinventing Theology in Post-Genocide Rwanda. And it's been a lot of good news around you, Father. You also became the principal of Hekima College. And so uh, what has been the experience of authoring this book uh, books that are doing well and becoming the principal? Uh, Thank you for the question. Uh, First of all, uh, I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors. I stand on the shoulders of uh, the recent uh, Father Benezet Bourgeois who died recently and he kept asking me to write down my story. And I stand on the shoulders of Rorenti Magesa, the late Professor Rorenti Magesa, whom I accompanied uh, when he retired from Hekima University College. I went with him to his diocese and to his home village. And I was, as I was about to leave, uh, I felt uh, uh, it was 
only adequate that someone accompanies him back home, like an African will do, to accompany an elder. And as I was about to come back, my, uh, Professor Magesa sat me down and he said, my young brother, histories are told, but you will be surprised what other people say about you if you don't write your own story. In the name of God, write down your autobiography. I have written several books, at, but none of those books took me to the United Nations to speak. And your story did. And then uh, I remembered the words of uh, uh, the famous Cardinal, uh, this is Henry Newman, in one small book that he wrote on consulting the faithful in matters of in, uh, morals. And that small book, Cardinal Newman, he says, the church will be diminished if it doesn't consult the faithful, the laity. And uh, uh, fast forward a century later, an Australian Jesuit, uh, uh, Gerard O'Collins, he said, who should be consulted today? If the church was to consult the people today, who should, if Cardinal Newman was to write a second volume, what could he say? Maybe he would say on consulting the victims of history today. And so I wrote the book uh, really uh, as a way of responding to the desire of Magesa, the late Professor Magesa, the late Benezet Bourgeois, but also speaking from the perspective of a survivor of the genocide in Rwanda, the horrific uh, history that we have had, not to lament, not to attract pity, but to see how someone can rise from the ashes and still offer hope. And I'm amazed, uh, uh, twice before I departed from uh, Laurent Magesa, he said, Marcel, you'll be amazed by how your book, Risen from the Ashes, I have a copy here, you'll be amazed by how it will touch people's lives and hearts. Magesa's prophecy has been fulfilled. Someone read this book from Amazon, and bought the, the copy, and he said he wanted to meet this person who wrote the book because he was profoundly touched. And he left Hawaii and came here to Nairobi to wow. meet him. So, uh, and then he said, I can't imagine how somebody who lived through what you did, and actually chapter three and four really narrate the horrific uh, horrors of Rwanda and how I lost my parents and siblings. And he said, I wanted to meet you. I can't imagine how someone can rise to become a president of a university. It, given what you lived. And then he donated $100,000 to the university. So, Magesa's prophecy has been fulfilled. Wow. Uh, and so, uh, and that echoes also the words of um, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Orobator when he taught me a course in, in Ecclesiology and Trinity here at Yekima. He said, young Jesuits, young scholars, write down your story. If you don't write, you will be surprised by what other people say. And so I took that to heart. Uh, and Robator has uh, certainly endorsed the book and several others. <laughs> and so in short, I stand on the shoulders of several others who have inspired me. And then the second book, uh, a co-edited book, is Reinventing Theology in post genocide Rwanda. Reinventing theology, we are not reinventing God, but in a country that has had a horrific tragedy where so many people died, what went wrong? Do we need some rethinking, reimagination? Uh, what is it that went wrong for a, a predominantly Christian country to have a genocide? So we thought we needed some reinvention of our Christian ways of evangelizing. And so the, we, this book is an excellent book, where, uh, published by uh, Georgetown University Press. And uh, uh, it, we are launching it in Rwanda in December because it came out just four months ago. And uh, this will be certainly a masterpiece for anyone who wants to do theology after the genocide in Rwanda. Uh, I edit, uh, co edited it with uh, two other Jesuits from Rwanda, Father Elise Rutagambwa, who also holds a doctorate in ethics, and uh, Michelle Kamans, who holds a, a doctorate in scripture. So, systematic moral theology. And then uh, scripture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, congratulations, so, uh, congratulations, Father. Thank you very much. And then I have my doctoral dissertation, which will be published into a book by Breer next year. 
Congratulations. I really is quite um thought just as you describe it. I was privileged to have read some sections of uh, reading from the ashes. Sure. And there there's the subjective validity that comes from when you tell your own story. Um and not only like you said, you don't tell the story just uh, about narratives of contamination, but you actually of our narratives of hope, yeah, showing us the footprints of God. I mean, what you're doing is really an African theodicy. How can we believe in God? Yeah. How can we believe in God when we are surrounded by so many things that make us doubt, God, are you still there? And in your present role as the principal of Ekima University College, you are celebrating 40 years of existence. So again, God has placed you here not only to embody the stories of the brokenness and the wounds and trauma you suffered and your people suffered and many people in Africa suffered, but now you also embody in the story of a, a Jesuit intellectual tradition that has been mediated in a very significant way by Hekima University College. So can you share with us some of the significant milestones and accomplishments of Hekima? So why should we celebrate Hekima at 40? Thank you very much. Uh, Hekima at 40, or Emerald Jubilee, uh, Jubilee as they call it, uh, as I mentioned, Hekima started in 1984, so we launched the 40 years at the beginning of this academic year in August. And uh, we do that with humility, uh, but also there is a reason to look back with gratitude. Uh, 40 years uh, is, is not a short time. It's not also a long time. It's also a time of, of looking to the future with growth. But as we look back, what is what can we say about Hekima? Uh, uh, we have two, uh, two important programs here. Uh, the School of Theology that started in 1984, and it has formed uh, so many ministers of the church, so many servants of the, in the society. Uh, among these, uh, I would want actually, first of all, to highlight some of the people who work in some of the remotest places. Uh, one may expect that immediately to mention just only the elite, the people working in high places. But Hekima has formed some of the missionaries who are working in Samburu, in some remote places in Ethiopia, in some inaccessible regions of, of Kenya, in some places, war-torn regions like in Congo. And those are our pride. And they are making a, a difference. So pastors and sisters who are working are making a difference. But at the same time, Hekima University College has also formed bishops, archbishops. Uh, so uh, people who are serving in leadership in the church and has formed also people have turned out to be ministers in their own countries or you name it. Uh, presidents of universities, superior generals of congregations, uh, deans, rectors, principals, vice chancellors. So while we look back with uh, that sense of gratitude, knowing that it, we are not just forming an elite group, we are also made, forming people really directed, involved with really people. At the same time, we, we, we probably host one of the best libraries in this region. Uh, so in a continent where people really desire to read and to do more and to do uh, uh, excellent education. Our library here at the Hekima University College holds almost, uh, uh, almost really a lot of books, I should say, uh, close to close to a million of uh, books. And that's quite an achievement. Wow. So, so many people who have done doctoral studies at Queer, at the, at the Catholic University of, of Eastern Africa, or in, at the Nairobi University, or at Tangaza University College, actually have come here. I have the testimony of Mugambi, Professor Mugambi himself says it. Had it not been because of the library of Hekima, I would not have finished my program. The professor, uh, Mary Getui, would say the same. I spent hours and hours in the library of Hekima, and I was able to do my work and have 
moved to associate professor and full professor. So I want to highlight that achievement of the good library that we have. At the same time, we have uh, we have uh, we are equipped or we are happy to have so many congregations, religious congregations, uh, with us. As I speak, we have seventeen. Uh, female and male con religious congregations. So it's, we are not only forming Jesuits. So that also shows people have appreciated the program that started only to form Jesuits and has expanded to 17 congregations. And that also includes several lay, lay students with us. As we celebrate 40 years, we are also celebrating 20 years of, this, of the School of Peace Studies and International Relations. Another wonderful program. The combination itself of peace studies and international relations is unique in the region. So that attracts uh, uh, so many students. At the same time, none of our students who has finished the program is jobless. And given that we are living in a continent where there are so many conflicts, so forming people for peace and international relations is key. Some have gone to work in the, at the United Nations, at the Eastern African community, or even the remote places and war-torn places. To give one example, uh, right now, and uh, thanks to this book, someone read the book, and they gave, uh, he asked me, what can, how can I support you? And I said, in places where people suffer, women suffer the most. And the person has donated scholarship for seven women coming from war-torn regions. Wow, wow. So speak of Cameroon and Eastern Congo, the northern part of Cameroon, the place that has been ravaged by war. And so that's that's actually one of my greatest joys. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so as the the forty years have we have we hope I will speak of what we hope to do in the next. But these two programs are key, and we hope we will move them further. Yeah, congratulations. I've actually sent a lot of students to study at the Hekima Institute for Peace Studies and the International uh, Relations. So I can attest to the quality of uh, your, your graduates. Sure. And we're going to take a break now, Father. We will, come, allow me, we will, come, allow we will me. come to hold the thought, Father, so we can sure. listen to this music that you have told us. And what is your what's the favorite music you want us to listen to? Uh, the favorite music I have uh, comes from is one of the favorite music of the late Professor Magesa. Out of many, one people we are. Uh, it's a uh, it's a wonderful music, uh, and I hope uh, I don't claim any right to the music, but it's a beautiful music by Grams Morgan. Now we we'll listen to Out of Many, One People, as we take a break, brothers and sisters. You are listening to African Catholic Voices, a podcast service of the Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network, and we are privileged to be um, in our midst today, that we have in our midst Father Maso Wineza, the principal of Ekima University College, and Father has been sharing with us about Hekima at 40, but also his own intellectual journey that is a compelling story that is still unfolding. So let us listen to Out of Many, One People. Um, yeah, you were um, desiring to uh, conclude a thought, and I'd like you to join that with your choice of music while they can speak to you so profoundly. Why do you love this music so much, Father? You know, I love the music uh, because it speaks of uh, that we need, first of all, one another. Uh, I am because we are. No one is really self-sufficient. But the music also has, uh, as a theologian, the music has an eschatological dimension to it. When you get there, may you find a, heart, a hand to hold you. So there is a hope that where we are heading would even be better. But at the same time, there is a recognition that we are we are so many and diverse, and yet we are one people. Uh, and so the kind of uh, interculturality, uh, the interpersonal relationship, eschatology, if you like, and then the message of hope, 
and and finally I do recall that uh, this was the music that Magesa asked me to play for him when he was leaving us. Thank you. And so we come back to your celebration of Hekima at 40. So in the time that remains for us, because we have now short time uh, remaining, so what are you hoping to achieve for Hekima, and for the Jesuits in Africa through this celebration. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, at the heart of a NA university, there is a desire to really promote academic excellence. Uh, and, uh, and there is a lot of mediocrity out there, so we don't want the Hekima to add to the numbers. So we had quite uh, really substantive uh, uh, inaugural speeches and lectures. Uh, and in, in as part of this celebration, we had an excellent uh, inaugural lecture by uh, Lado Ludovic, uh, an anthropologist, a, a Jesuit from Cameroon who did anthropology at the uh, University of Oxford, who challenged us to see the, really the interconnection between peace studies, anthropology, and theology. Mm -hmm. uh, and and learning certainly on Lana, uh, uh, Karl Rana, but really uh, ushering us into this academic year, new academic year, 40th and, uh, academic year. That was really a success. And then we have had also, we are living in a continent ravaged by climate change on, and globally speaking. And so we had a wonderful, uh, uh, again, lecture and invitation from a biblical scholar to look at ecology from the biblical perspective. Uh, that was in September. And then the issue of migration. So we are a, a school that deals with also with contextual issues. Professor William O'Neill from uh, Santa Clara University uh, had dealt with the topic of migration. Uh, so uh, a, a public lecture welcoming migrants and refugees, a, an ethical perspective. And then uh, all these are professors, but at the heart of our university is also to promote students. So we had, we canceled classes for a whole week and students uh, presented their papers, were engaged in a conversation, criticized, and that's a culture to promote. And then very recently, we had uh, another wonderful uh, memorial conference in honor of the late Professor Magesa. Uh, ours is to be a school that also celebrates our pioneers and hopefully out of this celebration, new, new voices will emerge. And we are honored to have the brother of the late Professor Magesa, so Professor Magoti, who joined us from the University of Dar es Salaam. And then we had uh, 23 scholars who gathered here uh, just last week uh, to, uh, to have a conversation on how we do we live together. That was the overall team. And we looked at the issues of, of mining, the issues of uh, reconciliation, forgiveness, water resources, uh, and then violence in the Bible. So several topics that came up and we are coming up with a book out of that conference of last week. So academically, in one semester, we have had seven, seven wow. wonderful events wow. uh, to speak of. Then uh, as I speak right now, uh, the neighborhood doesn't have electricity because there have been power outrage. But right now at Yekima, we are working on Sora. So uh, the whole, this campus where I am is run 24 hours on solar energy. And this started just two months ago. That's a milestone. It's a Laudato Si par excellence, mm -hmm. a Laudato mm -hmm. University par excellence. And mm -hmm. we hope to extend that to the second campus and uh, with the next semester we will be on solar. It was, a, it's a huge project because uh, it meant really a, a serious investment. We have planted more than 600 trees in the campus. So the campus is green, that's, that's beautiful. We are not just only about uh, uh, green energy and uh, academics. Our students also are coming up with uh, a liturgical CD, songs uh, to celebrate our diversity, but also to worship and praise God. And that's coming out at the end of April next year. 
And so uh, uh, and then uh, we hope to expand our property. We are engaged with our neighbors to see how we can uh, buy a new property where we will put two other departments. Uh, actually, I just came out from having a conversation with them a few minutes ago. So and what then, departments, what departments are you, you said to put two other new departments? In theology yeah. or in other areas of in, a, in, a, in other areas. Uh, in theology, we want to move to a doctoral program, certainly. Uh, but in a, in a, we are working together with the province of the Jesuit province of Eastern Africa to really become a full-fledged university. And with that, we have data science as another department. Mm -hmm. Then we will have the School of Migration and International Stud Security in a continent where we, you see so much uh, conflict. And that goes along with the, the Jesuit apostolic preferences that we have. So we are working within that framework. And then we will have a School of Business. So come the next three years, that's the project really expanding our programs and becoming a full-fledged university. And then collaboration with other universities, obviously, and that's part of my job as, as principal. How do we collaborate? Let's say, hopefully we will have uh, an opening with uh, DePaul University, but yeah, now we are exploring the possibility of working with uh, Santa Clara University through the School of Theology uh, of, of, uh, of, San of Berkeley, where Father Orobator works is, as dean. Then, uh, of course, collaborating with the, university, the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, where some of our professors here can be on the co dissertation committee, because I think only that way we can promote people to become associate professors. And I love to celebrate my brothers so that they can rise. So that's one other, uh, some other milestones. Uh, and we are going to have also a conference on the pioneers of, uh, of Hekima. Some of them bishops, archbishops, and some of those working in some places that are remote. So that conference is scheduled in February next year. I will be quick to mention also our wonderful program in the Historical Institute program that we have uh, in Africa, which collects several important documents on, on Jesuit history or history in Africa. And this will be a reference for the future. This is housed, housed by our postgraduate campus, and it's a wonderful resource, resource that we have. And then boost the Center for Research, Publication, and Publication. So uh, a lot of initiatives, and actually uh, many of them have already been realized in this first semester. So we hope to even uh, increase. Congratulations. Next. Congratulations, Father. This is I mean, this is so compelling. I can't stop listening to you. And I'm sure our um, audience uh, will really cherish this rich feast of faith, of vision, of imagination and reimagination. So we thank God for the, the gift of your leadership and your team and the Jesuits in Africa. And we are running out of time, but what do you want people to know in terms of support? How can we be part of your vision? Are you, some of us who are teaching, are you hiring? Are you asking some of us to put in our CV? Are you looking for grants? Are you looking for endowment? So in two minutes, how can people who are listening from all over the world uh, be part of this story of Hekima? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, any serious university dreams of having an academic chair where scholars can come, do research, uh, present papers. And so one of our dreams as we now usher, uh, we now move to the Golden Jubilee because we are celebrating now 40. I hope we are going now running to, to the 50 years anniversary is really to have an academic chair in African and peace studies. Uh, and, and in a continent where we are so, we want to be a theologate of reference, I think that will be a milestone. And given that demographic shifts uh, in Christianity, we want this theologate certainly to be a reference in the next 20 years. And to do so, you need to begin to prepare today. And so uh, my dream is that this year will deliver us with an academic chair where Professor Stan 
he, we can come and the chair is in doubt, he will be able to live at ease and do research like other universities do. Uh, so that's that's one 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 area. Then uh, come uh, the next three years, we want to have a doctoral program in theology. That's that's my that's another dream. And finally, I think um, needless to say, if we really want to make impact and challenge the areas of clericalism uh, in Africa, we need to invest in the formation of women. Uh, if you ha want to have a voice at the table, you have to have people who are competent and who have been formed. So we in Africa need to keep asking who is missing at the table. So uh, in this, and uh, what I would really uh, ask for support in addition to what I have just said on the chair and the doctoral program is some scholarships for women in theology and peace studies. You form one girl, you form the whole village, the African saying goes. And so um, I would like to see an increase the number of women at Hekima. And when you have a number of women in the school, so even some of our seminarians who study here in theology, it changes the mentality. When they go back to the ministry, they cannot treat women as if they were second class because they have been challenged. And you can only begin to think of that when you have formed women who will also come and teach them. I take an example. In Rwanda, the whole of Rwanda, my country, we don't have any woman who has a doctorate in theology. It's very, it's regrettable. Yet women are doing a lot in the civil area. I was at the major seminary in Rwanda recently. All teachers are men, and they are forming 250 seminarians. So you can imagine what that does. So help me have at least 10 scholarships for women in theology and 10 for, for women in peace studies. And our fees are really affordable. Uh, you it 10,000 to form one woman in theology for three years. And then 12,000 to form one woman for two years in peace studies. Uh, so uh, if you think of what that means in America and other places, I studied at Boston College. My one year I paid 70,000. That could have said, paid for, for so many here at Ekim. So in short, African chair, formation of women and moving forward with a doctoral program. Thank you. And I think these are these are realizable. And as you said, uh, for Hekima to become a theologate of reference in Africa, then people don't need to come to the US or go to Europe to study. Um, I mean, they can only come in terms of uh, partnership and exchange like people do here. So it's a exchange just to know how they do it in other countries. So I'd like to thank you, Father Maso, for uh, the gift of uh, your leadership, your, your wisdom, your tenacity, your vision, and uh, total commitment uh, to God, to the Catholic intellectual tradition, to the Jesuit in uh, intellectual tradition, but your love for Africa for creating this uh, capacious space where Everyone, everyone is welcome. It, so I hope, brothers and sisters, that this message of Hekima at 40 and the gospel proclaimed to us today by Father Wineza will sink deep into each and every one of us and we can become promoters of this vision through our support, through our prayers, but also trying to be inspired. So if you don't have a copy of Reason from the Ashes, you can get your copy on Amazon. You can go to the website of the Pauline Sisters and you can get a copy from Hekima. Uh, you can go uh, to the website and you get information and you can contact, contact us uh, through this podcast and then we we'll give you the contact of Father Maso. And please, Get a copy of this book, Reason from the Ashes. Get a copy of Reinventing Theology in Post-Genocide Rwanda. So if you're looking for how theology looks like, the kind of theology that is being uh, brewed in an African part, 
here you got a very good example. So get a copy and do something for God. Do something for the church. Do something for Africa, for your local community. And as we come to the end of this conversation, uh, we ask you, Father, to please say a prayer for us and bless our audience. Thank you very much. Gracious and loving God, we want to thank you for the gift of life and wisdom and the wisdom that you have given to Father Stan. And we also entrust this ministry and all those who will be listening to this poster, podcast to be touched and also to see ways of making a change. We know that at the heart of leadership is to make an influence for, for the change and for good. And we have seen that in your son, Jesus Christ, he came here to make a change. So we have life and life to the full. May you continue to bless the work of Father Stan and all those listening, and also that all we do may always remain above all with humility and remain for the glory of God. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Father Wineza. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And you'll be hearing more from this very compelling scholar and church leader and um, educational leader. Until we come your way next week, we ask you to be strong in your faith, to be courageous in hope, to be faithful and fervent in loving. Let's take care of our lives, the lives of one another. Let's take care of the church. Let's take care of Africa. And let's take care of this earth, our common home. Bye.